Hello, let's have a talk about CPU pipelining in this video. Definitely one of the harder concepts in this topic. It's all about trying to improve efficiency of your CPU. In other words, improve performance, because if hardware is not being used efficiently, well, it means it's not currently at its maximum output. It's not being used to its full potential. And idle time is when a component is sat there doing nothing. So if they're sat there doing nothing, therefore they're not at their full potential. And pipelining is trying to cut down on this idle time. Because for example, we've got our fetch decode execute cycle. Well, if only one of these stages is active at a given point, it means the other two stages are sat doing nothing. So if fetch is currently active, this means decode is idle. So the component involved here is the decoder, which is part of your control unit that is sat doing nothing. And if execute is not currently running, the ALU is sat doing nothing as well. So they're not currently being used efficiently because they're sat doing absolutely nothing. Same issue if we were decoding, ALU is still idle and things which are used during fetch, like for memory is not being used and most of the registers are not being used as well. And execute, finally our ALU actually does something, but the other two stages are idle and not being utilized effectively. And this is not efficient because they're sat not working. If it was totally efficient, they'd be working 24 seven. So pipelining will never get to that point exactly, but it will try and get you a lot closer. So pipelining in a nutshell, how does this manifest itself inside a CPU? Well, when one instruction is being fetched, another instruction is currently being decoded and another instruction is currently being executed. If you are asked to explain how pipelining works in a CPU, this is your go-to point because that should hopefully make sense, especially once we look at a example of this. What makes less sense initially is the actual definition of pipelining, which we will break down. But the definition of pipelining is something like this. Pipelining is a form of concurrent processing where multiple stages of different instructions are executed simultaneously. Perhaps that sounds quite bad. Perhaps it doesn't sound bad. It might sound all right because you just see the word simultaneous and they're like, oh, it's parallel processing. But pipelining isn't quite the same as parallel processing. True parallel processing is when you have three instructions being executed exactly at the same time. So this would be the situation where you have multiple cores. You've got three cores. Each core is executing an instruction at exactly the same time. So in other words, all three instructions are being fetched at the same time then all three are being decoded, then all three are being executed. That's not how pipelining works. Pipelining isn't true parallel processing. That's why I've used the word concurrent. Now concurrent isn't a word we really use often in paper one, or at least it won't ask you to define it in paper one. It's more for paper two. Concurrency is a bit broader than parallel processing. Parallel processing is an example of concurrent processing, but there are things which are not parallel, but are concurrent. Concurrent processing is where you carry out different instructions in overlapping time periods. So how we might visualize this is if we start instruction one, we then, while instruction one is still finishing, start instruction two. Then while instruction two and instruction one are finishing, we start instruction three. So they are not literally doing exactly the same thing at the same time. Instruction one might be fetching initially while nothing else is happening. It's then decoding when instruction two is being fetched. Then instruction one is executing when instruction two is decoding and instruction three is being fetched. They are happening in overlapping time periods, but different things are being done to each one at the same time. Now, like concurrency, pipelining as a term comes up much more in paper two as a general term because pipelining exists in other areas of computer science. A pipeline itself is just a sequence of steps that are being carried out by different units. So we've got a chain of steps each step is being handled by a different unit. Let's try and visualize this. So a pipeline will progress through your CPU in multiple intervals. At the very start, when your CPU first turns on, it will only have one instruction currently being worked on. So it's fetching instruction number one. There will be some idle time initially because it's literally just started. It's got nothing else to do at this point. But very soon after, it will finish fetching instruction number one. So it moves on to decoding instruction number one. This is where pipelining will start to come in. It will immediately start to fetch instruction number two. Whereas if we didn't have pipelining, it would currently be idle in the fetch stage. Then the third interval, we move on to executing instruction number one. We move on to decoding instruction number two. 
and we move on to fetching instruction number three. Now this is an example of where we are now much more efficient because no components are idle. And this process will repeat with this pipeline, with this chain of different tasks to do. So instruction number one is now finished. We execute instruction number two, we do code instruction number three, and we fetch instruction number four, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now this model of pipelining, where we have three different stages, is what I would strongly recommend you have in your head and you try and write down in your answers. In reality, the pipeline is a lot longer in a modern CPU, which is worth you knowing about because they could ask you about contemporary CPUs, but it's really hard to verbalize. So in reality, the pipeline could be a lot longer. So for example, here is the fetch steps. We could potentially have a pipeline which lasts in each one of these different steps. And we could do the exact same for decode, the exact same for execute. And contemporary CPUs often have pipelines which are around 30 stages long, which is really hard to imagine, really hard to visualize. So much better to have in your head, we've got a three stage pipeline in CPUs. So the benefits are parts of the CPU are idle for less time. We can't completely eliminate idle time, but we're trying to get rid of it as much as possible. So what is the actual benefit of this? Well, overall, more instructions can be carried out in a given amount of time, which is why this helps performance. How does that affect our users? Well, it means programs will take less time to execute. A program is a bunch of different instructions. If we can do more instructions in a set amount of time, this means a program will take less time to execute. But this is true despite the fact that each instruction takes at least the same amount of time as it would if we weren't using pipelining. So looking at, at one instruction, doesn't we can't really see a benefit, it's just collectively we do have a benefit. And that's because wasted time is being cut out in this process. The first analogy I can think of is queuing for your shopping at a supermarket. If you've got three self-checkout terminals and only one is currently open, you're having to queue up behind other people. You're arguably wasting time by waiting for somebody else to finish paying for their shopping. However, if we open up all of these terminals, so all of them are always active, there'll be less queuing time because I can get started as soon as I'm ready. For me personally, when I walk up to this terminal and start paying for my shopping, that'll take the same amount of time regardless of whether we are using all three or just one. It's just overall, it'll take less time because I'm not waiting around for other things to finish. I've put at least in this bullet point here because Purple Only can have issues. It can actually slow down an individual instruction. Overall, it definitely helps a CPU in the same way that cache definitely helps a CPU. But on an individual level, sometimes there can be issues which slow down the process for an individual instruction. So what are some issues with pipelining? Well, this process can stall. Stall is where we are waiting around and it is slowed down when two different pipeline stages require the same component. So memory is the most obvious example of this because we use memory in both fetch and execute. In fetch, we are fetching the instruction. In execute, we are either fetching data or we are writing data to memory. And if these two stages happen to require memory at the same time, one of them is going to have to wait for the other to do this. And the control unit will have to manage this process. It will have to decide which stage requires memory first. This stalling may contribute to it being uneven, but just generally speaking, different pipeline stages may not take exactly the same length of time. This whole process is almost predicated on each stage taking exactly the same amount of time. In reality, some fetching operations will be slower than others. Some execute operations will be slower than others. It may be uneven, and this can cause bottlenecks. If you are executing a really complicated instruction and the execute stage is taking a few clock cycles, that means every other stage behind it is having to wait for it to finish. That creates what's called a bottleneck. Bottleneck is where you are waiting for one process to finish and you can't do anything until it has finished. One of the biggest issues is relating to branching though, which I want to go into a bit more detail about. This will make most sense if you've already covered assembly code in your lessons. If you are studying this early on in the course, this may not make a huge amount of sense just yet. But branching is where we have things like selection and loops in our code. And branching creates a hazard. A hazard is a risk to our pipeline, something which can slow down or cause issues in our pipeline. So branching commands have two different outcomes. Outcome number one is it doesn't branch. It turns out you check the instruction and we don't decide to branch. But 
but which causes issues for pipelining is if we do decide to branch. Now, this can only be determined once we get to the execute stage. At the execute stage, we look at the branching command, we look at the condition, we decide, are we gonna branch or not? So the execute stage comes right at the end of this pipelining process. If it turns out we do need to branch, this results in the rest of your pipeline being discarded. And the word for this is flushed. If we have to flush our pipeline, that means a lot of work has been wasted because I didn't need to do all of that work. To try and understand this, let's look at an example of some assembly code here. This may not make any sense depending on where you are at in the course, but this code here, most of these instructions are normal instructions. We've only got one branching instruction, which is BRP loop. What that means is if the accumulator value is positive, we're gonna jump back to this loop label. So in other words, our program will normally execute top to bottom. We'll go imp, then we'll go out, and we'll go stack out, sub one. We'll go one by one, all the way down. That is not branching, but at BRP, we may branch, we may jump back up, or we may just continue. So that is creating this hazard. That's a risk to us doing pipelining. Because let's say we're jumping in when we are currently executing stack out. We're currently up to store count in my program. Therefore, we are currently decoding BRP loop and currently fetching LDA end. And it's all progressing perfectly normally. However, when I get onto executing BRP loop, this is when I'm checking to see, do I need to branch or not? If I need to branch, I'm gonna to need to jump back up to loop. If I don't need to branch, no big deal. I just continue and move on to execute LDA end, then halt. But let's say the volume accumulator is positive, therefore I am gonna loop, that's not good. Me having to now branch means I need to discard those first two stages in my pipeline because I don't need those. I'm in fact going back up to this line here I'm not moving on to these two lines here. So that's me flushing my pipeline, that's me chucking away hard work. I was all, I'd already decoded, I'd already fetched those instructions. They are now getting chucked away because I'm not doing them anymore. So that now introduces more idle time. It means I've got to start again from scratch. In modern CPUs, they employ lots of very clever techniques like speculation and branch prediction to try and get around this and try and at least anticipate issues like this and they're usually pretty good at resolving it to avoid this happening very often, but occasionally they'll get it wrong and they'll need to flush the pipeline and it will result in work being chucked away. But overall pipelining makes a big difference to performance and definitely increases the efficiency of CPUs.